I hope everyone's doing good this evening. Thank you for joining me. I am Mr. Ish. In this video, we're looking at an alternate definition of a derivative. You know what the basic definition of a derivative is. It's this, you've seen it so many times. The derivative of a function can be represented by means of the basic definition. You know, limit as h approaches zero, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. The slope of a secant line by means of this limit is becoming a slope of a tangent line. Let's look at everything with regards to an alternate definition of a derivative. You can come up with a very good definition by means of a good diagram. If this represents a particular function f of x, we have a particular point here of interest. We know that's x, but with regards to an x and y coordinate, you have x comma f of x. That's what you have. If you were to go h units on this side, you know you're looking at an x plus h because you're h units away. This specific point over here would be x plus h comma f of x plus h. You know this, this is nothing new. However, from this point of interest, if you were to go h units in the other direction, you know this point here would then be x minus h and then this point on your curve would be represented as x minus h comma f of x minus h. If you were to take these last two points I've drawn, this and that, and connect them, you have developed a secant line. If you were to determine the slope of the secant line, how would you do it? You have x2, y2, x1, y1. Do the slope formula. Slope formula for a line here, it's a secant line, will be change in y divided by change in x. And let's develop that slope here of this secant line connecting these two points right over here. Will be f of x plus h, this is my y2 minus this, f of x minus h, that's my y1 divided by x2, x plus h minus x1 right here, x minus h. Simplify this out, what are you going to get? You'll have f of x plus h minus f of x minus h divided by, if you open this out, the x's cancel out, but you have an h plus an h and a 2h. This right here represents the slope of a secant line. However, if you want to convert this into a slope of a tangent line, in this particular form, you can. The derivative of this function, which was f of x, the derivative of that can be now represented by means of this formula. Limit as h approaches is zero. This f of x plus h minus f of x minus h divided by 2h, this right here is another very legitimate definition and formula for a derivative and now you've seen it. In the remainder of this video, what we will do is prove this to be true or we will verify it to be true. To prove it to be true, you have to actually compute or analyze this specific formula which has been developed. Limit as h approaches zero, you analyze this. What happens? You would put zeros in places of, look what would happen. You'd have f of x plus zero minus f of x minus zero divided by two times zero. Same minus same, you'll have zero divided by zero in indeterminate limit form. So now you can think about doing the Le Hopital's rule to analyze this derivative and you can. You do derivative with respect to the h variable in the numerator and derivative with respect to h of the denominator expression. The denominator is easy but here you have composite functions. You can do a substitution u is equal to x plus h and then you'll have a function with regards to u that would capture this part then you can do a v is equal to x minus h because this indeed is a composite function then you can do a function with regards to v and look how it would come here with regards to the numerator you'll have derivative with respect to your u substitution f of u and then you'll have du over dh with regards to the h variable of this x plus h this right here represents the derivative coming through with regards to the Le Hopital's rule for this now let's do for this part, you'll have d over dv, f of v, and then dv over dh, you'll have x minus h, and you know the derivative of the denominator, 2h is easy, it'll just be a 2, at the end you can put a 0. Now when you look at the derivative of f of u, you're looking here at f prime u. When you're looking at the derivative of this with respect to the h variable, it's just a 1, you don't even need to write it. When you're looking at the derivative of this, it's f prime v, because you know the prime represents the derivative of the original function. Here, with regards to the h variable, the derivative of minus h is a minus 1 times minus 1 divided by 2, you can put a 0. Now, you see this minus 1, you can put it, bring it here and convert that into a positive, and you can entirely eliminate this minus 1. All you have to do now is go back to your limit evaluation. Limit as h approaches 0, you evaluate this. You can bring the re-substitutions of u and v you're looking here at limit as h approaches zero. 
you're looking at f prime x plus h plus f prime x minus h divided by 2. Now I've already taken care of the denominator very early on so we don't even have to worry about that. Now if you put zeros in places of h, what would happen? And we can easily finish it for you right over here. When I put zeros in places of these h's, look what would happen. You'd have f prime x plus f prime x because the h's are zeroing out divided by 2. You have 2 f prime x divided by 2 which is what f prime x. So we're seeing this. So by means of the Le Hospital's rule, we've validated this definition of derivative, which was right here. Limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x minus h divided by 2h. Yet another alternate definition of a derivative it has been developed for you earlier on, and now it has been proven and validated for you. Thank you. Have a good day.